Today, Dr. Zoon is testing dragsters using a flow visualization wind tunnel, an AirTech 40 wind tunnel, a roll test ramp, and for the final test, the EL80 racetrack. Hello kids, Dr. Zoon here. Today, we're going to be working on our dragsters, finishing them up, and doing some testing on them. I think we're gonna have some fun and we'll learn some things too. We've applied our coats of paint and finish coat and put on our decals, and I have actually named this dragster the Zoonster. So we're ready now to put our axle bearings, which is actually a clear straw, into our axle holes here and here. What we'll want to do is cut the straw to the length of the axle hole. We're going to put the straw across the bottom of the dragster and mark the distance across the dragster at the axle hole so that when we cut the straw, it will be flush with both sides of the dragster. Now we'll insert the straw into the axle hole and check to make sure that it's flush on both sides of the dragster, both here and here. We will repeat the process with the rear axle, again holding the straw on the bottom of the body, marking the distance across the body at the axle hole, and then cutting the straw to that length. We'll insert the straw into the axle hole, check to make sure that it's flush on both sides, and there we have our axle bearings for the dragster. The axle bearings, or straws, actually help to reduce friction between the dragster body and the axles. We're ready to assemble the wheels and axles onto the dragster body. We'll start by placing one axle in one of the front wheels like that. If you have difficulty getting the axle into the wheel, take the axle and sand it slightly with your sandpaper to slightly reduce the size of the axle and to remove any burrs. Once we have the wheel on the axle, we'll add a washer. We'll place the wheel and washer onto the dragster. We'll place another washer onto the other end of the axle. And then finally, place the other front wheel onto the axle. We'll repeat the process with the rear wheel and axle. We'll insert the axle into one of the rear wheels, which is wide. We'll place a washer onto the axle. And we'll place the wheel and axle into the dragster hole. Place the other washer onto the free end of the axle and our other wide wheel onto the end of the axle like that. We've completed assembling the wheels and axles to the dragster body. We now need to make sure that these wheels and axles spin freely and we also need to check each wheel for any plastic protrusions that there may have been in the injection molding process. For instance, here's one right here. We will need to remove this little piece of plastic using either a Zacto knife or sandpaper. We're ready for the last step in completing our dragster, and that will be to add the screw eyes to the bottom of the dragster. 
The screw eyes allow the dragster to follow a monofilament line or a fishing line down the track. Let's go ahead and put those on now. We'll want to place the screw eyes on the center line of the dragster, which is halfway between the wheels, both front and back, and we'll want to place them either right in front of or right behind each axle. We don't want to put it right on top of the axle because then the screw eye will go down and screw into the axle. That would not be good. So we'll place the front screw eye starting it into the wood with a twisting action. Once we have the screw eye completely into the wood, we'll want to make sure that it's rotated so that the hole for the string is towards the front and the back, like this. We'll place the screw eye at the back of the dragster just behind the axle in the center of the dragster and again we we'll use this twisting motion to start the screw eye and twist it into the wood and again we'll finish up with the screw eye rotated so that the string will pass through both screw eyes at the bottom of the dragster. Once both screw eyes are in place Turn the dragster over and make sure that the screw eyes have clearance between the bottom of the screw eye and the floor. Now that we've completed our dragster, we're ready to do some testing to see how our dragster is going to perform. We'll observe the results and record them for posterity. What we want to do now is to take a look at how the dragster moves through the air. To do this, we'll use the flow, which is a flow visualization wind tunnel. It will allow us to see how the dragster is moving through air by actually moving air and smoke across the dragster. We'll place the Zoonster dragster in the flow visualization tunnel by sliding the viewing platform out, placing the Zoonster on the platform, and sliding it back in. We're ready to introduce some fog into the tunnel, which will simulate the flow of air as the dragster is going down the racetrack. What we want to look for is turbulence in the air around the tires or wheels around the dragster body itself. And we want to look for any spots where there are the air is not flowing freely around the dragster. You'll want to record your observations of where there is turbulence for future reference. Let's take a look at the dragster as it cuts through lines of fog as produced by this rake and see how the dragster will look as it's going down the track into a laminar flow of air. Notice the deflection of the bottom rows of smoke and the top rows of smoke as they go across the dragster. We're ready to get some quantitative data for our dragster using the AirTech 40 DI, which stands for Digital Interface, wind tunnel. When we were working with the flow visualization tunnel, we got qualitative data, that is, data that we could look at and see and observe, but not necessarily any numbers that we could write down as actual data. So now we're going to put our dragster into the AirTech 40 DI and let's get some data on how it will perform in our real race. To connect our dragster to the AirTech 40 DI, we'll insert the drag hook through the screw eye on the front of the car like this. We'll place our dragster in the wind tunnel. 
Once we have the dragster in position, we'll place the open hook of the drag hook over the drag sensor at the front of the testing block. The next step is to hold on to the back of the dragster with a little bit of force and move the lift sensors to directly underneath the front and rear wheels. The AirTech 40 will give us three readouts of data for our dragster. The first will be drag. It is measured by a drag sensor in front of the sensing block and is connected to the front of the dragster. As air blows across the dragster, the dragster will resist the airflow and that resistance is called drag and it's measured and read out on this gauge right here. The second readout will give us the positive or negative front axle lift. If the front axle lift is negative, it means the dragster is pushing down on the front sensor. If the front axle lift is positive, it means the car is lifting up at the front axle. Likewise, the third readout gives us the positive or negative rear axle lift. The rear axle sensor will sense how much lift there is at the rear axle. Negative lift will mean that the dragster is pushing down at the back. Positive lift will indicate that the dragster is wanting to go up at the back. We'll place the window of the testing chamber on and we'll be ready to test. We'll zero our gauges so we get an accurate reading and then we'll turn the tunnel on and watch what the gauges do. You notice the readout for the drag is about 42 to 43. The reason it changes is because of air turbulence. We also have a positive lift, which means it's lifting upwards of about one on the front axle and anywhere from two to five on the back axle. Once again, it's turbulence. We have more turbulence at the back of the dragster than we do towards the front of the dragster, causing the gauges to change. Now that we have data for our dragster, we need to record it on a data sheet so we can keep track of it for further use. The real question is, what does this data mean? For our dragster, the front drag reading is an indicator of how well the dragster is cutting through the air as it goes down the track. The lower the reading, the faster your dragster is going to be. The lift at both the front and the rear axle will give us an indication of how the car is traveling down the track in terms of its up and down movement. If we have high lift on both the front and the rear axle, it means our dragster is actually flying down the track. What we're really looking for is about an equivalent number at the front axle as we have at the rear axle. And the lower that these numbers can be, the better, but we don't want to get into the negative numbers. If you remember in the first video in this series, I talked about how important the mass of the dragster would be. So let's go ahead and find out what the mass of our final completed dragster is. We'll put our dragster on our electronic balance. And our reading says that it's 116 grams. That's a pretty heavy dragster. This one is made out of basswood. Let's take a look and see what our balsa dragster came out at. Much better. Our balsa dragster is only 50 grams. Quite a lot of difference. Let's record this in the data table. In our data table, we'll go ahead and record the mass of the red basswood dragster. The last of the tests for our dragster will be the rolling test, where we'll find out how far the dragster will roll from a prescribed height. 
We'll use the Pitsco roll test ramp and we'll place the dragster at the top of the ramp to begin its roll. We'll release the dragster, let it roll down the ramp, and then see how far it rolls from the ramp. We'll measure that distance and record it on our data table. Here we go. I've laid out a measuring tape starting from the front of the ramp and the very front of the car is at 77 and 3 fourths inches. We'll record this in our data table and then you may want to try to go back and make some modifications to your car to make it roll better. See what you can come up with. We've set up the fast track here in the gymnasium to do the final test, which is the speed test for our dragsters. We have our red dragster, which is made out of basswood, and the blue dragster, which is made out of balsa wood, and we're going to do a time trial to see exactly how fast they are. Let's do a little prediction here to see which one you think will win. These are basically the same design, so they should have about the same aerodynamics. So this one being 115 grams and this one being 50 grams, which one do you think will win the race? Each dragster will run on a monofilament line down the track, so we'll remove the monofilament line from the track, put it through the two screw eyes on the bottom of each dragster to keep the cars on the track as they go down. We'll release the tension on the string by pulling on it and pulling it over the screw eye. And we'll put the monofilament line through the front screw eye first and then through the back one. And we'll pull the line back and stretch it over the end of the screw eye and turn our dragster back over. I've moved the dragsters to the start line of the fast track and I'm ready to insert a CO2 cartridge into the back of each dragster. This CO2 cartridge has eight grams of carbon dioxide thus the CO2, and it will propel each dragster down the 65 and a half foot track in about a second or so. We'll place a cartridge in the back end of the red basswood dragster, and we'll place a cartridge in the back end of the blue balsa dragster. Now that we've inserted the CO2 cartridges into the dragsters, we'll back them up to the launch pod and we'll make sure that the front of the dragster is on the start line. We will cock the launch pod, put the safety on, back the dragster into it, and check the front end to make sure it's aligned with the start line. Repeat the process with the blue dragster. We'll cock the launch pod, turn the safety on, and back the dragster up, checking to be sure that the start or the front of each dragster is at the start line. We're ready for the big race now. Our dragsters are staged. We're going to turn the safeties to off and we're ready to hit the reset button which will start the countdown timer on the Christmas tree. It will go amber, 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 and green. When it turns green, the dragsters are going to start in a big, big way. So let's go ahead and hit the reset and watch them race. Here we go. We're here at the finish line and the blue car had the fastest time so it was the winner. Did you predict correctly? Did the blue car win like you thought it would because it's lighter? Yes it did. This is Dr. Zoon hoping that you will build a very fast dragster after watching these videos. And until next time, we will see you real soon.